When you think of the Battle of Pelano Fields, you cannot forget about the fierce Mumakil that come to action. Their stampede is enough to destroy everything on our path, friend and foe alike. A bloody, gruesome battle on both ends it must have been. And that was exactly what I wanted to recreate down to the finest detail when I started on the base of my Mumak. And today I'll show you how I've done it. If you have been following my project on restoring this Mumak, you may remember how there was a lot of excessive glue on it. To remove the pieces that had lost their details or got damaged over the years, I decided to use a Dremel tool due to the thickness of the base. With this Dremel tool, I drilled a few holes around the parts I needed removing. These holes were then connected so that the pieces would simply fall out. Precision and patience were important, as I did not want to damage any of the parts that were still in a good condition. Once this was done, the empty spots left in the base needed to be filled up before I could add something new. My plan for this was to use a piece of paper and glue it to the back of the base. This would allow me to simply fill up the gaps with milliput later, as it would act as a sort of buffer. At least that's how it worked out in my mind. The paper alone was too thin and could not support the milliput completely. So in the end, I had to support the back with milliput as well, to make sure that it was sturdy enough. When the milliput had finally cured, it was time to cover the base again. For this, I used a couple of casts that I had made with Instamold. For those of you interested, I have already made a video on this process in the past, so be sure to check it out. Both the casts, as well as the milliput on the base, were then sanded down. This way, both the bodies and base were flat, making it easier for the two to fit together without any unevenness or flash causing trouble. However, as the two are made of different materials, I decided to pin the bodies in place. Using a 1.5mm handrail, a hole was drilled in the back. A metal rod with the same thickness was then glued in this hole, serving as an anchor. Finally, the pin model was then glued down to the base, fitting perfectly. We are not done yet, however, as I still had to resculpt a lot of different things, such as legs and muscles on the horses, hair on some of the warriors, cloaks and other fabrics, and a couple of other things. Speaking of sculpting, a lot of the sculpted and details on the base got lost in the process so far. This meant that I had to base it again with some modeling sand and gravel. I didn't really mind doing so though, because this meant that my base would look a lot more like my other bases, as I always use the same gravel and sand. Now then, time for some paint. I will not go into detail on how I have painted everything, as that would simply take too long. However, for the Rohan Warriors, which I focused on at first, I have a painting video available, which was uploaded quite a while ago. Because of this, do keep in mind that it might be a little bit outdated by now, as my painting skills have improved since. For both the horses, as well as the orcs on the base, I did not follow a recipe. Simply because you can use so many different colors in painting them, I let my creativity flow at the moment itself. I did however make sure that they would fit in with the rest of my armies and miniatures that I had painted before, so that it looks as if they were part of it. Another recipe I already came up with years ago was that of the Easterlings. Again however, my painting skills have improved since, so a couple of things were changed to make it look even better in the end. If anyone would be interested, I could definitely cover them in a video in the future. Let me know in the comments below. Although technically we are finished at this point, there was one more thing that I wanted to add. And that were arrows. Adding these arrows brings even more detail to the base and really shows how horrific and disoriented the battle must have been. With these fine details added, the only thing left to do now is to add some flock to the base. I started by adding some grass tufts to the base, as well as a couple of colorful flowers. 
To fill up the rest for the base, I mixed two different kinds of flock. One a very bright green, such as meadows, and the other being more yellow in color, resembling dried grass or even straw. And there we have it, our base is now finished. I think this piece manages to capture the Battle of Pelennor fields well. And the different bodies that I added makes it even more unique to me. It took me a lot of hours, but seeing the final results, I sure feel proud about it. I hope you too enjoyed this video of course. If you did, let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to hit subscribe so you won't miss any project in the future. See you all next time.